It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Jody Biasi of the Locked On Sabres podcast. Butcher Box has all you need for a tasty, stress-free holiday season with high-quality protein delivered to your door. Sometimes the best gifts are the ones you give yourself, and Butcher Box is here to help you treat yourself to more delicious, wholesome meals. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash NHL and use the code NHL to get free chicken wings for a year. That's three pounds of free-range organic chicken wings free in every order for a year. When you sign up at butcherbox.com, com slash NHL and use the code NHL. Bodies are dropping and on the Saturday special of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, we're taking a look at all of the injury news that you need to know about that's impacting your fantasy hockey squad. Thank you so much for joining us because we're also taking a look at the LA Road Warrior Kings. Are they for real? And a big board of Saturday bets. Thank you for joining us. Let's get this paper. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yet another Saturday special of your source for fantasy hockey news is about to pop off the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us and for making us your First listen, every single day we see you and appreciate you nonstop. We're doing it for y'all, but today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Here we go again, Steel. The injury bug biting heavy. The Atlantic Division just getting decimated over the last couple of nights. We got to talk about it. Joseph Wall going down after what was probably gone online to be one of his best games of his yeah. young career. Let's talk about that. Of course, we're going to also talk about Thomas Shabbat, Charlie McAvoy very quickly. This Ottawa Senators team, though, Steele, I know the games played is very off, but this team seems to be off as well. DJ Smith, we'll talk about it all. And of course, these LA Kings steal. Record setting win streak on the road. I believe it's 11 straight games away from home with victories. Got to talk about it. Got to talk about these silver buckets they've been rocking as well, Steel. Big time <laughs> bets on Saturday's board. Right over to you, though, because there is a lot to talk about. So let's try and keep it tight. Man's got a big Friday night, big Saturday on the way here. Let's get into it, though. Wherever you want to start, but if you're okay with it, let's start with Joseph Wall. Yeah. Because watching that game last night, he was sensational. He was had a few five, ten bell saves, and then just this injury, and it doesn't look good. We're not going to speculate on the time, but my goodness, it doesn't look good. No, it doesn't look good. And you were right. That was probably Joseph Wall's best game that we've seen out of him. Uh, you know, in any in any of his starts in the NHL, he was all over the place making unbelievable saves. Mm. I actually thought I was in a time loop because he absolutely robbed Vladimir yeah. Tarasenko in the first period. And then I saw the exact same play, exact same save in the second period. I was like, wow. This is absolutely astonishing Mm -hmm. what Joseph Wall is doing right now, keeping the Leafs in the game because the Leafs were getting dominated for the first period uh, by the Ottawa Senators. Outshot, outworked in in their defensive zone uh, zone the entire first period. And Joseph Wall, uh, credit to him because he kept them in the game and he won them the game. I know Martin Jones came in after the injury, but that's a significant loss for the Maple Leafs. It didn't look like much. His skate blade was on the left post. He was holding his ground. It looked like he was trying to push off of it to get to the other side. And clearly something just tweaked or he pulled something in his groin. He couldn't put any pressure on that left leg. Uh, Again, we don't know the details of the exact injury, but Sheldon Keefe has said that he's going to be out for some time. Uh, And that's a huge loss for the Maple Leafs because we know they struggle with the goaltenders lately. We know that they've been struggling in the defensive zone. Uh, And Joseph Wall has been a huge part of that. I know you've traded for him or, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, you drafted him in your keeper league and he's just been absolutely beautiful. Eight, five and one record. 280 goals against average, uh, 2.80 goals against average in a 916 save percentage. So it's a huge loss for them. But Ilya Samsonov, he has been sick the last couple of days. He should be yeah. back very, very soon. And, you know, Martin Jones is going to be backing him up. So I think he would be very happy to get some NHL time, uh, get some NHL action as well. And he's going to have to do his best backing up Ilya Samsonov because maybe the Leafs can't trust uh, Samsonov moving forward if he's not on his uh, best, uh, uh, playing his best. 
say what you will about the Maple Leafs overall. And yeah, there has been points at the start of the season, at least, where Joseph Wall was also struggling with some inconsistencies. Yeah. But my goodness, is this not just a heart-wrenching, gutless time for a goaltender in his yeah. position of his career? And this isn't career-ending or anything like no. that. But just right in the mix of him really starting to develop his game, feel confident in the crease, controlling rebounds a lot better. And honestly, Steele, he doesn't get rattled. That's what I was most impressed about Joseph Wall's performance over the start of this season is last year we saw a young kid come in and seize the reins. Sometimes they can almost not even think and realize how much the stage is going to impact them. And they play out of their head and then they come back the following season and they can't get it done. Joseph Wall seems to be a very steadying presence. And on a Toronto Maple Leafs team, that where the defense isn't exactly that, he has been a savior. I've said it before and I'll say it again. He's the goaltender of the right now and of the future. And this is really, really bad timing for himself on the on the on the season path. And my goodness, is it going to be tough for this Toronto Maple Leafs team to bounce back if Ilya Samsonov can't start making some saves? Because to start the year, he has not been able to do so. And I'll say this also. Martin Jones is not a guy that you want to have to rely on steel, but we saw last year with the Kraken, he can get wins and yeah, he's okay yep. for that third stringer. I'm more so looking at this from a fantasy perspective because if Samsonov struggles, Sheldon Keefe is not going to hesitate to go to the veteran in Jones. That's why they brought him in. And then you're going to have to look at Marty Jones on a week to week, at least game to game basis because the Toronto Maple Leafs are still going to be getting wins in that division. Yes, they are. And I completely agree with that take. Martin Jones might be one of those guys you have to take a look at uh, off the waiver wire. You know, that's even something that we've, we've done or a lot of people out there have looked at when we're talking about the Seattle Kraken with Joey Decord, who came out mm. of nowhere has been playing great for them. So Martin Jones is a, is a, is a decent backup. He's a third stringer. He struggled over the last couple of years. Don't forget they went all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals when he was with the San Jose Sharks when he was playing at his best. I know that was, what, five, Ooh. six years ago now. A while ago, so yeah. He, he's he's got to be excited to get back into NHL action. So I'm looking forward to see what Sam Sonoff can bring, and hopefully yeah. if he doesn't bring it, Martin Jones can until Joseph Wall comes back fully healthy. But someone else, that's injured. we got two more injuries to talk about in the Atlantic yeah. Division. Thomas Shabbat. Uh, this Ottawa Senators team cannot catch a break mm -hmm. right now. They're, they're losing defensemen left right and centered it, it doesn't matter what they do like it's absolutely astonishing how many injuries they get on the blue line over the last couple of years he's yeah. only played nine games this season decent stats though for uh, only four assists four points but he's got 20 blocks 26 shots on net mm -hmm. throws the throws the body not as much as you would like but that's not as that's not a part of his game not but this really. is a huge loss for the senators and this is why they continue to be at the bottom of the league when you actually yeah. look at it, they're actually uh, plus four in goal differential. They're scoring more than they're letting goals against. Uh, so that's that's a great stat to look out for the Ottawa Senators. You know that their top studs are providing. Brady Kachuk, Tim Stutzla, Claude Giroux has been great for them. Vladimir Tarasenko has been a little bit better. But they're not, they're not winning games, and they're struggling to close out these games or even to start off hot uh, mm. in the first period. So for me, it, it, it's kind of... Um, you know, obviously, as a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, I despise <laughs> the Ottawa Senators, but yeah. I did have them being a lot better this year, and especially oh, yeah. for some of those additions. You know, Corpusalo I thought would be a little, a lot better than what we've seen. Mm -hmm. um, it just hasn't been the case for Ottawa, and, and that's why they continue to be at the bottom of the league. Also, they've played the least amount of games in the NHL at 21 games, uh, which is kind of weird to look at, but it's just how it's gone for the Ottawa Senators the last couple of years. They continue to lose defensemen. It's one of the ways it's been going for Thomas Shabbat over the last couple yes. of years as well, who had a busted hand and he had a conky last year. He was out with a concussion for a little while. This is a player at 18th overall draft choice. I thought actually the Ottawa Senators did really well to get him 18th that year. I thought he could have been a lot higher and he's just been one of those guys that I think because of the injuries and the lack of the inability to stay in the lineup consistently, it's obviously affected his confidence and obviously it's affected his ability to produce because he does have offensive upside. I know, you know, the peripheral hits and the banger league beauty and it might not exactly be there from that physical standpoint. But he chips in with shots. He has the block shots like we just showed. Yep. And then we'll show again right here. YouTube, smash that subscribe button. We got the graphics going heavy. We're going to talk about Charlie McAvoy right after the break along with the LA Kings and Big Time Bets. 
but it's just the tale of a season gone right off the rails for the Ottawa Senators. And you make an interesting point about the games in hand. They have an opportunity. They're going to have to win a very serious percentage of their games. They're yeah. going to have to go off at like a 7 or 8 out of 10 per game clip to really make a move. Ah, can they do it? I don't know. The goaltending is going to have to. I think, honestly, across the board, everybody has to be a little bit better. That's just it. Everybody's got to be better, and that's the front office. That's the ben the bench boss because he's obviously – DJ Smith is under fire. Steel, I don't know if you saw, though, uh, right at the end of the game the other night, the lights blipped off at the Canadian Tire Center. Now, this Ottawa team can't even keep the power on right now, so there is a lot going wrong. There's a lot going to go right on the rest of today's episode. Like I talked about, Charlie McAvoy streaking LA Kings, war, Road Warriors, baby. 11 straight wins. We'll talk about them. Saturday's bets. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. I know we come to sports to escape from life, but can we just talk about preparing for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. This is scary stuff. Can't even imagine a hopeless feeling of someone who needs to go take care of their kid or someone who has a supply chain issue looking for their life-saving medication that they need. Thankfully, there is Jace Medical, Jace Medical, the Jace Pack. Five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including respiratory infections, skin infections, and all the stuff that could happen to any of us, especially at this time of year. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. Be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to get prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com. Use offer code Locked On to get 20 bucks off your order. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. The big news continues on the Locked On Podcast Network. They've launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering every single league. You don't want to miss out on it, so go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel. And thank you so much for tuning into the locked on fantasy hockey podcast, making it your mm. first listen every day, hit the subscribe button leave a follow and a five-star review. We appreciate all that love and support you show us uh, someone else who might need some support from the Atlantic division. Charlie McAvoy got mm. absolutely rocked in yeah. that game against the Buffalo Sabres and the loss against the Buffalo Sabres three to one. Uh, and he left the game not to return after watching it, you know, it, it wasn't vicious. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it didn't look as serious as it was, you know, at full speed. But then clearly you can see that, again, it wasn't vicious, but I, I think it was J.J. Paterka. He, he sl slightly elevated Paterka. his elbow. Again, wasn't vicious, but Charlie mm. McAvoy was already kind of bent down a little bit, ran, skated right into his elbow, but he left the game not to return. So we're going to mm. have to keep an eye on uh, the uh, concussion protocol that he went through as well. It's just also, it's kind of like the way he fell to the ice. It looked yeah, a bit scary. True. And when guys of his caliber, look, Steel, and I probably need to give this player more credit than I've been giving him. He's finished in the top 18 in Norris voting four years in a row, including fifth and fourth, only two and three seasons removed. This season as well, having another solid one. Three goals, 14 assists, 42 shots on net, 33 penalty minutes, also chipping in with the peripherals, 48 block shots, 27 hits. As much as he is that kind of greasy player steal that you really want to cheer against, he's the kind of guy that I guarantee you he's in your team's colors. Excuse me, you're probably rocking with it. So I think after that hit, we're not going to speculate on if he's out. Just keep your eye on it because if you own Charlie McAvoy and it is something to do with a concussion, which is what the early speculation is. You're going to have to deal with it, but that's why you'll be tapped into Monday's waiver wire. Let's talk about these LA Kings deal, because I think you and I have both talked a lot about them. I would say for now, literally since you and I have been starting to do this, yeah. which is coming up on two years now, pal, by the way, shout out almost a little uh, anniversary party. I won't cry yet, but this has been a squad on the rise for us. Balanced up front. Good blue line. Yeah, they even move out a guy like Sean Dursey, and they seemingly get better this year. They go out and get Cam Talbot, which was a really bold move. Cam Talbot is on a heater. I'm not ready to just exactly write all the way home about Cam Talbot. But right now, Steele, 
things are clicking and things are working for this LA team, including yeah. an 11 game win streak. And they just really are for me, one of those teams that is just really fun to watch. They've crept up into second in the Pacific division. They have a plus 36 goal differential steal, which at quick glance is the best in the entire NHL. So maybe we need to start paying attention to this team who actually also over the last couple of years has been an absolute wagon in terms of offensive output, being right there at the top of the league in terms of goal scoring, rolling three really good lines. Yeah, they have yet to lose a road game, 11-0-0. And I say yet because I'm alluding to my big time match oh. we'll get to that very, very soon. But you're absolutely right. This team is undeniably giving Vegas – uh, probably the toughest mm. shot to go, you know, go back to back in that Western conference. They have been unbelievable. And I am going to gas up Cam Talbot because I've talked about okay. him yes, very highly the last two seasons does not get enough credit uh, that I think he deserves. He deserves so much more uh, credit from everybody out there. Stellar goal tending 12, four and one on the season, 933 save percentage and a 1.84 goals against average that puts him top three amongst goal tending this season. You're getting phenomenal production from your veterans and Anze Kopitar and Drew Doughty, who just seem like they've yeah. completely revitalized their game, especially Drew Doughty on the back end. Unreal. Adrian Kempe, your boy and Kevin Fiala, your boy are really undervalued for what they bring. And then look at these two guys, these two young studs, maybe not young for Trevor Moore, but Trevor Moore and Quinton Byfield have been putting on a show and it's awesome mm. to watch for them. However, with all that being said and how, Ooh. and how great this LA Kings team is, I find two problems with them moving forward. Hit Number me. one, Pierre Luc Dubois. Pierre mm. Luc Dubois has been a problem for them because they're paying him eight and a half million dollars a year. And right now, he has 11 points, 43 shots, 6 blocks, and 13 hits. It's not good enough. He's playing the second lowest average time on ice in his career at 16 minutes and 18 seconds this year. And he's only on pace for 39 points, which would be a career low. This player, when you have a player of this caliber and this talent, yeah. and he has more penalty minutes than he does points, that's a problem for me. And I, again, sure. the, the LA Kings have been so good even with him on the third line yeah, yeah. and again they continue to be great but that's going to become a problem come playoff time or the end of the regular season if he's still not contributing and they're going they're in the playoffs and we know it's a different atmosphere and he's taking more penalties and, and you know putting them on a disadvantage that's number one for me Pierre-Luc Dubois has to be a lot better mm. number two at the end of this regular season it's going to be a decade since the LA Kings won their last Stanley Cup and since they've won their last Stanley Cup, they've either missed the playoffs or they've been beaten in the first round. We mm. know this team was capable enough of making a deep playoff on last year. They're, they've gotten better this season, and we know they can make another deep playoff run or make a deep playoff run uh, at the end of this season into the playoffs. However, they've struggled to get out of the first round every time in the last 10 years that they've made the playoffs. And we know that's going to be something difficult because there's so many tough teams uh, top tier teams in the Western Conference: Vegas Golden Knights, Colorado Avalanche, Dallas Stars, Winnipeg Jets. And I understand, you know, if they finish second or first, that's going to mm. give them a better advantage, home ice advantage as well. Uh, even the Edmonton Oilers, if they go up against the Edmonton Oilers, they lost oh, to them boy. the last few seasons. Oh boy! So all I'm saying is they've got a juggernaut of a team right now, but they're going to have to prove it and get past the first round in the playoffs. Steal. Hats off, first of all, for breaking that down like an absolute pro that you are. Second of all, the nicknames on the players on Hockey Reference are absolutely killing me. I can't even stay focused. I'm looking at Ans Kopitar. <laughs> Kopi, Flopitar, Raccoon, Jesus. I don't know who's coming up with these. They Charlie, all end in I or Y, I swear. Charlie McAvoy's is Chucky Bright Lights and Bonafide Stallion. Anyway, <laughs> back to the point at hand here, which is a really good one, is this LA Club's LA Kings Club, because also Ans Kopitar leading the team in scoring at 36 years old. This guy, you and I throw out underrated a lot because it's kind of a cool yeah. thing to talk about for fantasy. I'm going to say it. This is the most underrated pivot in the entire NHL. He's getting it done year in and year out at 36 years old. Nobody's talking to him. He's got two cups, two Lady Bings, and two Selkies. And he really needs a lot more respect on his name. And I just bring it back to perhaps your most astute point, Hall of Famer for show. They're getting this done without their biggest offseason acquisition in Pierre-Luc Dubois. And I'm yeah. starting to think that now it was, we didn't want to be in Columbus. He didn't want to be in Winnipeg. It was the coach here. It was the situation here. It was the deployment there. I'm starting to believe it's with him up here. And if it he can't figure sure. it, 
sooner than later because he was getting a look up in that top six. He was getting a look with all their top players. So he's played his way down into the position he's at right now. So I think if they can get him going, oh my goodness. And they bring yeah. in, they bring back Victor Arvidsson oh. to re reunite that Trevor Moore, Philly Deneau, and Arvidsson line, which we all love. This team is going to make some noise. And I think this is the year that they get past the first round. But there's some ifs there. Quinton Byfield, though, has stepped out. He's yeah. arrived. He's looking really good. And I think that's a big reason why they've been able to offset the loss of Arvidsson and the poor play from Dubois. That's what happens when you play with one of the best centers in the game in the NHL, Anze Kopitar, that veteran rookie okay. year. Uh, yeah, it's it's been an unbelievable experience for him this season. He is showcasing all the skills that we've seen him do, uh, you know, uh, in the world juniors and, mm. and throughout his hockey career. We're going to get to big time bets, though, where the money is made. Saturday special edition for all of y'all out there. But this episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 in bonus bets if your team wins. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, which we both urge you to do because it's the best sportsbook app out there, there's no better time to get into the action. The app is super safe and easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and of course, our fan favorite here, the same game parlay that we almost do every other night, it seems like. So mm -hmm. visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Continue to hit that subscribe, leave a follow button, and a five-star review. We appreciate all that love and support you show us Monday through Friday. And that's why we're going to return the favor like we do at the end of every single episode. Big time mm -hmm. bets. Get some extra cash in your pockets for the holiday season. Flip. You're the best here. You're the king for big time bets. I'm throwing it over to you. Here we go. Show us, show us how it's done. Gassing me up, but the season's gone pretty <laughs> I like how you're picking up steam as well, Steele. This is what we're going to do for Saturday. We're, I'm trying to keep things simple. I'm going to Austin Matthews. That's my first pick, anytime goal. When he scored the two-piece against the Boston Bruins last week, I thought he was going to go off and explode. And yeah, I still think he's playing better, but I think he is still set to explode. And I think, let me just bring this up. So we had two goals against, two goals against Boston, and then he went yeah. pointless against Ottawa. I would like to see him respond, and I think he does just that in this situation. I believe you're also riding with him, so I like when we're on the same yep. page. I think also, just overall, and I said he's playing better, these games against teams like the National Predators, no disrespect to the National Predators. If the Toronto Maple Leafs, and this is a tough spot after Joseph Wall going down, they did, however, win that game, so that helps that momentum. They need to show that they can get it done here without, quote-unquote, their number one goaltender. So that means leaders on the team, like Matthews, have to step up. In his career, in 10 games against the National Predators, five goals, five assists, you know, I like to dig into that. Hit me with Matthews anytime goal. That's my first pick steal. And I know you're liking it because you're on board with it too. I'm on board all the way. That's my first pick as well. Matthews anytime goal at minus 105 right now. So I'll get over to my second player prop as well. I'm going Mika Zibanejad anytime assist. I might actually switch that over to anytime goal. But for now, I'm going to leave it at anytime assist. He hasn't been scoring as much. Uh, he has not been scoring as much for the New York Rangers, but he's been facilitating. He's been playmaking. He's been passing to Artemi Panarin, who has been shooting the puck a lot more the last from the last two seasons. So I'm going to go with Mika anytime assist for my second pick. And I know we were just talking about the LA Kings. They haven't lost a road game this season, yeah. but I'm taking the Islanders on the money line. Uh, on the money line at plus 125 right now. Mm. They had a big win. I know it was against the Columbus Blue Jackets, 7-3 uh, against them, but that was something that they really needed. They need a, a really uh, bone-crushing performance uh, after that letdown against the San Jose Sharks where they were up 4-1. They get a big win mm. back at home against the LA Kings. And I, again, I know they haven't lost on the road yet, but they will on Saturday. Oh, I like it. I like the bold predictions. I'm with it, Steele. I don't know if I would go there myself, but I like that you have the cojones to do so. Not ready for a side bet either, but my last two picks and my lock of the night are totals. 
And that tells me that this stretch of the season, and I'm going to say it again, and I'm sounding like a broken record, but I don't (laughs) care. It's a really tough one to handicap. It's a tough one to navigate for fantasy GMs and for the real GMs in the NHL. Clearly, bit of a holding pattern. Anyway, Ottawa rolls into Detroit here. Ottawa actually holds an 8-2-0 record over their last 10 against the Red Wings. So take that for a grain of salt, as you will. But I'm looking to the total here because I think this Detroit team, as much as we also love what's going on with all the Patty Kane news, there's a lot of faces in that lineup. They are allowing some goals. Billy Huso has not looked good. They blow that lead against the San Jose Sharks the other night. Brutal. Don't I don't want to talk about that because that pooch my parlay cost me $284. Anyway. Yep. This is going to be a high-scoring game. Eight of the last nine meetings between these two. Over the number hit me with the over six and a half. I'm liking that one right now, Steele, at minus 140. Lock of the night. The Carolina Hurricanes have looked like hot garbage over this West Coast road trip, which they finish in Vancouver. They have lost 2-1 to Winnipeg, 6-1 to Edmonton, and a back-breaking blowing them they came they had two nothing lead and they blew it against calgary three two that's three straight losses on a tough road trip for an east coast club out west an american one to boot so they're traveling north and west steel so i'm not loving this spot for carolina but i am loving it for the under they're a tired club and they're desperate they got called out by their coach in back-to-back games so i really do expect them to clamp down i don't know who's going to win this one but then you look into the numbers as well, Steele. Four of the last six games between these two, under. Four of Vancouver's last five games at home, under. And 14 of Carolina's last 20 overall, under the number. Hit me with under six and a half for my lock of the night. I'm going to follow your lead on that one and take the under in that game uh, between oh. those two clubs. This is a little bit of a side note back to that Flames-Hurricanes yep. game, but look who got the win there. Dustin Wolf just talking about him getting a chance, an opportunity Let a couple of uh, quick ones in in the first period, but he held his Mm. ground uh, and got the win for the Calgary Flames, who have been a lot better, like we've talked about on recent episodes. Those are the big-time bets. Those are the lock of the night. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. And once again, you got to go check out Locked On. They've launched the first-ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. They're here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On plus the national shows covering every single league. So you got to go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube. Subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. And thank you again so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great weekend out there. Good luck with all your bets. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace. Selling smoothies is what I do, but for small business insurance, I chose my State Farm agent. He's a small business owner, too, so he knew how to help me personalize my policies. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Talk to an agent today. The Locked On NHL Podcast. Can't get enough of the NHL? Locked On NHL is your answer. Stay up to date on the biggest stories, the best rivalries, and the top stars around the league. Every win, every team, Every day. Listen to Locked On NHL. Available on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. The Monday edition of Locked On NHL is a must listen. Every Monday on Locked On NHL, host Gil Martin takes you to the three biggest NHL stories from the weekend's games with the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network. No national fluff. You get the real story from the Locked On experts who are with the team every day. Put it on your calendar every Monday on Locked On NHL. Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.